Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And in my last video, I reported on the news that Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo 1.7 were both released. And in that video, I'll be honest, I absolutely gushed about Affinity Designer. Affinity Photo, I like. Affinity Designer, I claimed is one of my top five favorite applications. And frankly, I hold true to that statement. And today we're gonna kind of talk about why. So if you're interested, Affinity 1.7 is actually on sale with the new release, and I get nothing out of this. This is 100% me because I love the application, not because of any kind Kind of endorsement so I'm gonna be called a shill I'm gonna be shilling hardcore but I'm not getting paid for it so just know I honestly truly do love this application so what is affinity designer all about well we're gonna kind of gloss over that we're talking more about me this time I'm gonna be egotistical on this one so affinity designers available at affinity.serif.com they have all kinds of details about affinity designer but we're gonna break down why I particularly love it now first off I am a fairly casual pro user. I guess we could put it that way. I don't work in this daily. I use it maybe five or six hours a week. It is key in what I do. I use it for creating illustrations for tutorials, books, for title covers, for videos, for graphics within and so on. But I'm not the type of person who lives in a program like Affinity or Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or whatever. This is not my true calling. This is something I use occasionally. So the accessibility or ease of use, it's very important to me. Now there's another aspect about this that's very important to me too. And that is, and this one's going to convince a lot of you, I think. Here we go. This is the sale page for Affinity Designer. And what you see here are the price tags. This is Canadian money, by the way. So that's $54.99 on sale right now. Now, unfortunately, you have to buy it on a per platform basis. And that is definitely a negative with Affinity. So if you've got a Mac and you've got a Windows, you've got to buy both versions. So that would be $110 Canadian or about probably $90 or $85 US. All right. So that, or uh, by the way, a single one, you're looking at about 45 bucks US to buy. Now let's compare it against Adobe Illustrator, for example. And here we see, oh crap, I can't buy it. Well, that sucks. I can only subscribe to it. And I know that's one of those things that burns a lot of people, myself included. So there is no longer any way to buy Adobe Illustrator outright. Now, when you used to be able to buy it, I think it was about six or 700 bucks. That's the last I recall, but it's been a long time since they've sold it. So now what you can do is buy it in subscriptions. A single app subscription is $31.49 a month. Or if you want to fork out your money on an annual basis, uh, we're looking at 20 bucks or paid up front you're looking at $240 a year. All right, so let's contrast. Uh, $55 Canadian and you own it forever, so $45 US, or $240 US. I think you can see where I'm coming from here. It is like a quarter of the price forever versus per year. It's insane the price difference here. Now the next one you might be coming into is why don't I just go with um, an open source version, something like Inkscape. Inkscape being the primary vector-based drawing application out there. And that is an option. And I don't like to speak ill of uh, open source projects. They're awesome. Inkscape is improving rapidly. The newest version 1.0 is much improved. I don't like the interface. I find applying filters really painful. I, it's just not intuitive to me. Um, Drawing to do text in Inkscape is not intuitive to me, but more so than anything else in the world, and I, I showed this in the other video, this is a car SVG file. It's a fairly simple, but kind of complex SVG. I know I contradicted myself there, but it is um, less than a megabyte in size, so it's not huge, but there's a lot going on here, and let's just pan. All right, that's not horrible. It's not good, but it's not horrible. Now let's zoom in. So I'm going to hold down control and zoom in, which by the way, I already did. So now we're waiting for it to actually do the zoom process. Now I'm going to pan around here, chug, chug, chug. So say I wanted to move this border of this light around. This is what the experience is like. And frankly, I can't work like that. That is just unusable. It, it's not even close to usable for me. So if you're looking at a, a complex version, it's a nightmare scenario. Now here we are the same thing. This is Affinity Designer moving around just fine. Now let us just zoom in flawlessly like so. And I'll go ahead and I will go into, I'm not in select mode. Let's go into select mode. And there you see, that is actually usable. So there is the big difference between the two apps. I literally can't use Inkscape because the performance 
is just subpar. It's, it's just not there in all honesty. So that is my uh, approach there. Now, I don't come anywhere close to the level of complexity that Affinity is capable of. Um, but here you can see one of their examples. And this is actually a vector-based drawing. Now, this is very intensive. And the, the special effects, you're going to see it chug a bit while it handles the, the effects here. But here you can see this entire car is created out of vector graphics and shapes. So you see here, we've got the car as a group. Within the car, we have the wheel as a group. Within the wheel, we have the valve, the holes, the wheel itself. Within that, we've got the curves that composed it and so on. So you can see the level of detail that you can get. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to chug a bit as it's applying the special effects. But let me tell you, straight out Inkscape just could not do this level of work. Now, Photoshop, or sorry, Adobe Illustrator, I haven't used it in a long enough time to know what the performance is like. Uh, but you do get an understanding from looking at this photo that was made using 100% with um, designer here, what the capabilities are. Now these capabilities are so far beyond me and this is not what I use it for. What I traditionally use it for is simpler stuff, things like text. And there's one of those areas where again, it really shines for me. If I wanna create text, it's a matter of artistic text tool, drag my text on the scene. And so resizing or reshaping text is a joke. So let's say here I go, uh, my text like so. Now I can bring it in, we can turn on some anchoring like that, and then we can easily put this guy in them. Okay, why are you not on? Come on. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So I've got various different guides. So we can do snap, we can snap to the middle like that and the absolute middle of the page like that. So there is our text in the world directly centered. Now, if I wanna go ahead and start changing this guy out, let's zoom this guy out a little bit. Like so, and we come down to the text font uh, selection. And what you'll notice, and this is huge, you get real-time previews of what you're dealing with. Now, I know this is fairly common, but this is an essential feature for me. So if, if it's not out there, um, I, I don't think I could go back to anything that didn't have real-time preview. The having to switch to find out, and then you find something you like, there you go, you've got your text in there. Now, if I decide I don't like any of the things I've done, I've got a full history here that I can see from the, uh, to change things. So if I wanna go back and undo that, I can, complete non-destructive history, or I can jump right back to where I was in time. Now, the next thing that I often find myself doing is adding special effects to things. So come over here, you've got your various different predefined special effects that make things really easy. So if I wanna do an outline on something. I can come in here and I can say, all right, let's give this guy a red outline, and then we can make it that big. Now, if I wanna get into more complexity, I can come in here and drill in, and we've got a lot more options. We can change up the blending modes on that guy, etc. Now, another area that's really important is I have, when I'm uh, dealing with different layers and such, I don't work with this stuff on a regular basis. So for example, if I wanna put a background layer here and we'll change this guy's color out to, I don't know, blue. And I'll move this into the background like so. And now I wanna put something on top and I wanna do a blending on it. So let's say I wanna do like a text box here that I'm going to write in. We'll call this, we'll make this guy like a darker gray, but I wanna have it mix in with the underlying system. Now, of course you can do this in anything, like your layers and you've got your various different blend modes. What I like here is once again, I get that real time preview. So I don't necessarily work with these things enough to know what an overlay or, well, I know what an overlay is gonna do, but uh, exclusion or difference or pin lighting, I don't necessarily know for certain what those effects are going to be. Here they are there for me immediately. Now, another thing that really shines um, with this tool is you you can switch between vector and raster layers, no problems at all. So if I wanted to, I come in here, I can go a new layer and I can create a new pixel layer on top and I can switch over to the pixel mode over here. And now it's as if I was in a painting application. So I come in here with a paintbrush, come over here and pick my uh, the brush that I wanna draw with, for example, here. We'll go back to our color and then we can paint the world or I can create that guy, make that a whole lot bigger like so and I've got my various different paint mode tools. So I've got things like the blur and the brush tool and so on. So it's like having a full raster program in with my vector program. So I don't have to switch between the two. I don't have to load to another program a lot of times. And I do get your typical vector or your typical pixel art style programs here to work on pixel layers. And then I've got my vector tool. Now, ultimately your, your vector graphics are going to be rasterized at some point. If you save out to a PNG file or a JPEG or something like that, if you're creating a texture map or something, what you're creating is ultimately going to be rasterized. Now, another cool thing that they've got then is this thing right here. We can go into view mode and I can switch to a split view. And then what you can see 
The left hand side is showing how your vector is, your right hand side is showing how your pixel is going. So let's zoom in and you'll see the end result. So the right hand side here, we're seeing how it's going to pixelate. Left hand side, you're seeing the vector mode. So anytime you want to preview the one versus the other, you've got that ability right here. So you can see how your vector graphics are going to rasterize in real time, which is also another feature that I really like. Now going back to the text features, um, what else do I want to showcase with that? Oh yeah, is the, the sizing and formatting. So the nice thing here is, so there's your default font, your default size for your text. So I got my text selected, but if I wanted to squish it down, I, so that's just a straight out resize, but I can also squish it down like this on the fly, like this on the fly, or we can actually get a lot of fine tuned detail controls over our actual characters up here. So we've got character controls and we've got, um, yeah, let me bring up the window. They've changed things slightly with the most recent version and it's throwing me off a bit. So I have fine tuned control over both the paragraph and the character. So here we go. And I can structure out here. I've got, you know, I can change the distance between characters, the height and, and um, placement, the way that they are drawn, underlined individually. And I can also select within my text any individual character I want. And, you know, you see we can change out the colors or the effects on it. So you got a lot of fine tuned particular controls there. You've also got controls at the paragraph level like so. So you can control the spacing between things, justification, how things are laid out. This is the most straightforward text management I have ever dealt with. Now, another thing that you often kind of want to do is place your text so that it fits within a defined container. So for example, I wanted to do the same thing, but vertically. Well, we can come back here. So I got to go back to my, uh, my raster, my, sorry, my vector mode. And then if I drop this down, I've also got my frame text tool. And what I could do is basically fit the frame I want my text to go in. And then we're just going to make text. Now that's not that impressive because it's not even coming close to filling the frame. So let's just go here. We'll change out the size of it. Now, something is chugging on my computer and I'm not appreciating that. All right, here we go. So let's make this guy. There. So there you see it is now sized to fit into that particular frame. If I change the way the frame goes, it will fit into the subsequent resizing. This makes placing text within a certain size a much easier task. And that is another thing that I am really keen on in this program. Now, the final thing that I find very useful here, especially with the ability to mix in the raster and the vector brush stuff, is those brushes in general. So we come down here, uh, and by the way, if you work with a tablet, this is all pressure sensitive and so on, or same as if you're using a surface or something similar. Uh, but I come in here and I can draw with my, uh, my brushes, so we come up here, we saw this earlier on. Uh, we've got a number of different brushes. We've got um, pens and inks, chalks and pastels and so on. But I can come up here and any particular stroke I want, the strokes are just, it's smooth. It works the way I work. It's a very natural media feel to it. Um, and I just, I appreciate that aspect. Now, of course, if you switch back over into a raster version um, and you draw on a raster line, it's going to be slightly different but you're still going to get a similar experience. Now you can't edit that one. So if I go back here to this mode, I can grab that stroke, I want it, and I can go into an edit mode on it, and we can easily bend and change those particular strokes. And that, again, that is typical of vector packages. It's just the way that it all kind of works together that it really shines for me. And then once again, you've got a very consistent effect for applying a special effects. So if I wanna do an outer glow on that stroke, I do have set option. So here, and let's make that big. So you can apply the effects on every level. So on shapes or on uh, strokes or on pens or so on, you can easily create those special effects that you want. And of course, you've also got your, your typical vector style um, composition. So I can do that shape and that shape, and then we'll do, we can do a selection of them. And then you've got your typical Boolean. So like I can do a subtract from that shape. So you can create your compound shapes like you would expect at any particular time. And then of course you've got control over that shape. So if you wanna move an individual aspect within it, no problem. And then you've got control over the corner. So for example, if I want to switch out the corner type of something, I can do so. Actually, I can do that on the other brush too. So right here, I can switch the corner type and then have it bend out. And it's all just done and presented in a way that I find very incredibly intuitive to, to work with it. And I, I 
you know what, that's kind of about the extent of it. And then when it comes time to export out, you've got uh, pretty good options of selection. You've got PNG, JPEG, uh, GIF, TIFF, PSD, PDF, SVG, WMV, uh, F, EPS, EXR, and HDR, which was just added. So if you are working with that, and then you'll notice there are a number of different settings under each one. So for example, if we go to uh, PSD, you've got Final Cut Pro compatibility, for example, you've got uh, your resampling options. Same thing here, you go to JPEG, you can uh, pick the quality of what you're working with. Uh, PNG, you've got several different options as well. There's actually even an export profile. All right, cancel out of there. Over here for, uh, the working on this thing, so you can see your, your export options available over here. This is actually set up for exporting out of this guy. I'm kind of kind of getting to the end of the list of things that I like on it. It's just, I don't know, it, it's a program that fits me like a glove. It does what I need it to do. It does it in an easy way. It's got uh, that interactive feedback, which I definitely appreciate. And there is one last very cool feature of this program, and I will illustrate that right now. This here is Affinity running on my iPad. And this is actually pretty sweet. So what I can actually do, if I wanna work on a project, you know, at night or in bed or whatever, I can just open it up and you've got the same basic tools from the desktop version in iPad format. So you've got all the same pretty much functionality in here. You've got your snappings, you've got your guides, you've got your imports, you've got your uh, Boolean geometry creation, you've got gradient support, you have all those special effects I showed you earlier on. Um, you've got solid performance as you can move things around in the world, as you see there. Uh, we got easily resized fonts, you can rotate. And um, you can see here we've got a gradient applied on that guy. Uh, you can do outlines once again. So you see here we can change the outline around that guy. This is the exact same thing. This is capable of opening the Affinity Design projects. Um, it does the same basic functionality. You've even got your full history of construction support. You can uh, go back in time here. You can undo any of the stuff that you've just done. So like I can just kind of undo what I've done or redo what I do. So this allows me to basically do the exact same work I do on my PC on my iPad. And sometimes there are certain things that are not fun on an iPad, um, like precision and, and that kind of stuff. And what I can do is I can do a rough work in one and then finish it off, just drop it into my Dropbox account and uh, open it up that way. Or if you're using a Mac, your iCloud or whatever you want to do, and you can just integrate and handle it that way. So what all of my affinity stuff is sitting on my Dropbox. I can open it up in either application and it allows me to just keep my workflow going. Now, again, I should state that this guy isn't included. Uh, if we go back to the pricing structure, you'll see that the iPad version is $21 Canadian. It's probably about 16 or $17 US. And that is an absolute bargain. So even at let's see, $75 for the iPad and the Windows version, convert that into American, that's about 60 bucks on sale. Um, we're, we're still coming out way ahead of this price, like, like not even close. And then as mentioned earlier on, the most obvious alternative for um, vector-based work is Inkscape. And is this really an alternative? Uh, like, and I, I'm not, I'm not trolling this. This well, again, this isn't the 1.0 release, so there is a beta release that is faster. But the most current version of Inkscape that you download, this is the performance you get. And compared to this, there, there is no comparison. There, one is usable, the other is not. And that is ultimately why Affinity Designer is one of my top five programs. It is in my toolbox, it is something I use every day, and it is something I wholeheartedly recommend, especially if you're on the more casual end of this stuff like I am. Now, I know there are people that work, you know, 24 seven in Adobe Illustrator, and it's got functionality that you just need to do your job. And I can't even tell you what, you know, those very specific um, detailed features are in like the page setting world or for print setup. I can't tell you that Affinity Designer can do all of that stuff because I don't even come close to, to needing that functionality. And it may not be a full blown replacement for Illustrator people that are using this in the professional print world, for example. But again, if you are more casual like me, but you need a vector graphics program with a little bit of raster graphics work in there, 
there's no better. Like quite simply, this is just an amazing program. The mobile version is also quite the amazing program. And I actually don't even have stability problems. I'm having a weirdness today in that my pop downs aren't working, but I think that's because I need a reboot more than anything else. Um, so this is Affinity Designer, a program I wholeheartedly recommend. And I'd love to hear your opinion down below. Also, if you have any particular questions, let me know those things down below as well. And that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.